Hello, I'm the Brad Lloyd, and my channel is all about smart home tech using Apple HomeKit. Today, I'm going to tell you about just how determined I was to convert one of my regular pot lights to a Philips Hue color pot light. I'm not kidding here, this took way too much time, money, and effort. But man, I think it looks great, and I'm hoping you do too. I may have also hired an electrician for this one and awkwardly asked him if I could record him for my YouTube channel. All right, let's jump in. I'm so happy to have my very first smart color pot light. Now I've always called these pot lights, but Philips Hue, they call them down lights. And I've also heard people refer to them as recessed lights. Let me know in the comments what you call them. I have several pot lights, 18 to be exact, and most of them are connected to Lutron Caseta dimmer switches throughout the house. But I have this one pot light that I haven't yet made smart, and this is the one over my kitchen sink, which is mostly used for washing the dishes. It provides bright and direct light when working at the sink, but it can be a little bit harsh and even distracting in the evening as it reflects on the TV from the opposite side of the house. Today I've chosen the Philips Hue White and Color Ambiance Downlight. I love Philips Hue products and I ended up choosing Philips Hue all through my kitchen, which is one of the most important rooms in my house. I do feel like that we're seeing more competition from other smart home manufacturers like Nanoleaf and Maris, just to name a few, that are putting out some quality products at a more competitive price than Philips Hue. But there isn't much competition when it comes to pot lights that are compatible with HomeKit. Let me tell you, this was quite a process and I found out that the 5, 6 inch size was too large for the holes in my ceiling. Oops, pro tip, check the size and don't just guess. Stay tuned as the saga did not end here. HomeKit pot lights with thread will likely come in the future and I'll be first to try them out. But for today, I'm more than happy to go with Philips Hue even if it comes at a premium price. My original 5, 6 inch light cost me $69.99 Canadian, which is pretty reasonable. But there are a couple of things to consider. First of all, you need the Philips Hue bridge. If you don't already have one, that's gonna cost you an additional $69.99. If you don't have the bridge and you want to get into the Philips Hue ecosystem, then I suggest buying a starter kit that bundles the bridge with three or four light bulbs. Fortunately for me, I already have the Philips Hue bridge and I'm just replacing this one light. Now, before you start writing in the comments that Hue can be connected to Bluetooth instead of using the bridge, I will admit that you're correct, but there are some restrictions and drawbacks, like only being able to have 10 lights without a bridge. It's also slower because it's using Bluetooth, and the deal breaker for me, it doesn't work with HomeKit without the bridge. I was planning to do this video a couple of months ago. I had everything all set up to start recording the installation when I quickly realized that I had the wrong size. Once I realized that I needed the four inch pot light, I couldn't find these anywhere. I was like, what is going on? After weeks of searching, I finally found one and had to buy from a US retailer. With shipping and duty, this cost me $89 Canadian, plus the cost of a recessed can, which was another $25. And I haven't received the bill from my electrician yet, but you can bet that will be over $100. Should I have asked the electrician how much this was gonna cost? Yeah. Did I? No. This really isn't reasonable, and I can't find any other way to justify the cost than to say, I just really wanted this light. And that doesn't include the Lutron Aurora switch I bought, which cost me another $50. Will it be worth it? Let's hope so. At the end of the day, it's for the channel and I need to keep that new content coming, right? The other issue I discovered was how these lights connect. These are called retrofit lights and they connect using the E26 base. So to install them, you need a recessed can. I'm okay with very basic wiring, but this was a little out of my expertise. So in an effort to not burn the house down, I called in a pro to get this done for me. So just make sure to keep these things in mind before running out and buying one yourself. I also wanna mention that while I went with the colored version, Philips Hue also has a white ambiance version that you can find that's a little bit less expensive. Most of the time, I recommend installing smart switches instead of smart light bulbs in order to save money. But since this is just one light, the cost is quite reasonable. Well, sort of. I also think that having a dimmable colored light will provide soft accent lighting that will really complement the other lighting on my main floor and especially in my kitchen. This is something that I've wanted to do since we moved in, so I can't wait to show you how it turned out. One drawback to installing a smart light is making sure that the switch remains in the on position. I've covered this in previous videos and if you'd like to check out my full Lutron Aurora video, then you can do so by clicking the link up here. It drives me crazy when people turn the switch off and I get a no response error. 
Here in Ontario, Canada, it seems like we've been in lockdown for the past 16 months. But with restrictions finally starting to ease, we may be able to have visitors soon, and the kitchen is a common place for social gatherings. You may know not to flick that switch off, but there's a good chance that your guests won't. This is why I'll be pairing the Philips Hue Pot Light with a Lutron Aurora dimmer switch. This is gonna give us the ability to turn the light on or off and even dim the light right from the switch itself. And best of all, it's gonna keep the switch in the on position. Let me show you what's in the box and then I'll show you the installation. Here's a quick rundown of the specs. It's 650 lumens, which is 150 lumens less than the Philips Hue A19 color bulb. It uses 8.5 watts of power, is capable of 16 million colors, and it's rated for 35,000 hours. In the box is the actual pot light, the E26 base with connector, and an installation manual. Philips Hue recommends turning the power off before doing the installation, and I agree. Next it's time to add the Lutron Aurora. Of course, this is optional, but well worth it in my opinion. This costs $49.99 and comes with a paddle switch and a toggle switch option. The paddle switch is $10 more, but they're harder to find in stock. And since I had an extra toggle switch, I'm just gonna replace my existing decor switch and then use the toggle switch version. Okay, time to set this up in the app. Both my new pot light and the Lutron Aurora are both set up in the Philips Hue app. Okay, I've waited for it to get dark out so I could test this out. I'm excited to see if this one small change really does make a difference in my overall kitchen lighting. And since I can adjust the brightness, I can include these lights in my scenes while someone's watching TV without that harsh reflection on the television. So what did you think? I am so happy and personally love the extra color that it brings to the room. And best of all, I can now control it in HomeKit and use it with my favorite scenes and automations. Do you have anywhere in your home where you would like to install these pot lights? Let me know in the comments. That's it for today's video, so until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.